Good morning. It's Randy with Randy's RV Bible Study. And I got surgery yesterday for skin cancer. It's a pretty good get, a uh, good, probably two, I had two uh, spots. One of them seven centimeters. The other one's like three or four. And they run parallel, But you can see. This is uh, good news because the cancer's out of my body. So praise the Lord, right? Uh, I have some recovery, obviously, to do, but it's also good to illustrate this in the study that we're going to do in Romans 7 and 8, and I can't wait to share it with you. Um, so I want to, you know, talk to you about, this is, uh, this is always an uh, interesting uh, study. People use Romans 7. Again, we talked about license to sin. I call uh, the Christian life a license to to live we don't have a license to sin where sin abounds grace abounds more this christian this american this american christianity that we're seeing out here today is false teaching heretical christianity it's not spirit-filled christianity and it is not what the bible's talking about but i want to talk about some subjects that i've seen in a margin that I'm using out of my New King James Version. And uh, today's the 4th of April, if I didn't say that. Anyways, uh, 2024. Um, this is how sin is destructive and the law is perfect. Carnality. These are just some of the subjects. We're sold under sin. We're in spiritual bondage as people. People at, in our flesh. We are helpless and we have corruption. And there's a spiritual warfare we are carnally minded as individually individuals. We are in rebellion to God. Uh, I mean, I could just sit here inside, <laughs> you know, mortality, the spirit gives life. I could just sit here in, inside these two scriptures, but I want to get moving so that we can look at other things. So let's jump into this. Romans seven thirteen. Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not, but sin that it might appear sin was producing death in me through what was good, so that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. That's an interesting term. We are sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I, but for what I will to do, and that I do not practice, but what I hate that I do. I don't know if any of you have experienced that, but I remember giving into that because I just had that carnality. I had those particular lusts, and so I just did them. Uh, I just gave up. I just gave into that because I didn't even understand it. And then there are some times that I found myself, you know, for example, drunk, like totally wasted drunk throughout the day and didn't have any control over it. Uh, and not because I'm an alcoholic, uh, because I don't even, personally, I don't believe in that. I don't even the Bible talks about being a drunkard. We'll look at that. But uh, this disease of alcoholism, if that were the case, uh, while well, I live in Southwest Florida and, and uh, I see that disease running rampant then, because most people I see drinking are drunks. So uh, for, <laughs> for, for what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice, but what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. See the dilemma? We're all facing this dilemma. For the good that I will... Sorry, 19. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Don't get confused like the devil made me do it. <laughs> Don't get confused there. I find then the law that evil is present within me, the one who wills to do good. 
For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captive to the law of sin which is in my members. Right? That's that's what's going on. There's a spiritual law going on. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So here we are in the human condition. We're not going to stop at Romans 7. We're going to go to Romans 8 because everybody seems to stop at Romans 7 and then just calls it a day. Okay? So if we move into Romans 8, free, free, F-R-E-E. There's freedom here. And I should have titled this message that. I did not title that. I called it spiritual surgery since I just had surgery. So, Free from indwelling sin, there is now, therefore now, no condemnation condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. There it is, y'all. We're not walking in the flesh anymore. That's not where we're going to be, Christian. I'm talking to the Christian. I mean, the non-Christian, let's, let's, let's get you saved. <laughs> to the Christian, I don't, I, I'm, I don't even know if you're Christian. Why do I say that? Jesus says you must be born again. And this Bible that I'm reading, I don't know about your Bible, says that we need to walk after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me from the law of sin and death. And I want to stop there too. I said that, I said something that may offend you and I'm not trying to be offensive, but um, I want to be real with you because there is a self-deception and we live in a self-deceiving time and we live with many false prophets many false teachers, many false messages, many, many, many who claim to have Christ's message, but they're not even going with the Bible. Okay. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, we have a sin debt. It's its account. It's our account. We, are, we have a sin debt, y'all. We have a hell debt. And the, the account is uh, full, and hell is real. He condemned sin in the flesh that his righteous requirement of the law might be met and fulfilled in him, in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So you got to walk in the Spirit. He fulfilled, he fulfilled the righteous requirement of the law, death, and we need a sacrifice. Jesus Christ did that for us. Praise the Lord. For those who live according to the flesh... They set their mind on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. That, that is spiritual death, guys. And we'll talk about that. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. There's no gray area there. Carnally minded well, is death. Spiritually minded is life and peace. Go figure. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. Your That mind, if you're living in your flesh back over in seven, if you're living life in seven, uh, that's not the born again life. So don't tell me you're a born again Christian. All Christians are born again. You must be born again, Jesus said. Jesus says, likewise, if you do not repent, likewise you will perish. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But if you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed, if, 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 if indeed, the Spirit of God dwells in you. If the Spirit dwells in you. Does the Spirit of God dwell in you? You want to know if you're saved? Ask that question to yourself. I'm not going to tell you. You can ask that, but there's a test for you to know if you are saved. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his, capital H-I-S. And if Christ is in you, then the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in in you. Praise the Lord for his word and that is an awesome word and it's going to be a little bit longer study I'm thinking but I try to make these 20 minutes but I'm not going to sit myself down to this. I think it's real important 
because I think the American church is hurting and I think uh, it, there's a warning to wake up and uh, I'm an evangelist I'm not a prophet but if, if, if I was a prophet that would be wake up wake up America wake up and there's many people saying that wake up to the politics no wake it has nothing to do with politics the politicians that are in office right now are there because that's what you want and that's what God has placed there. And God, that's part of his wrath and a part of you want human beings to rule. If you really want to be ruled, then rule your flesh. And and how are you going to do that? You need the Holy Spirit. Now let's get to this. This surgery that I had was cancer. They cut it out. They removed it. That is the, that's the fix that's the prescribed and that was the prescription and that was the remedy so spiritual surgery is what we're talking about that's what I've titled this Matthew 530 if if your right hand causes you to cut it off if you're sorry if your right hand causes you to sin cut it off and cast it from you this is Jesus talking Cut, cut, cut your right hand off if it's causing you to sin and cast it from you. <clears throat> for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish and your whole body be cast into hell. Is he, Jesus saying to cut your hand off? No, but he's telling you the seriousness. This is serious. Scans are serious, right? Uh, left un, Left to its own, it would kill me. So here I go, getting it cut. This is the same thing that Jesus is talking about with sin. And I think this is a great illustration. I hope it is. Look at this. This is how serious the sin is in your life. This is a picture of that. It needs to come out or you're going to be dead. And that's what Jesus is saying. You're going to die. Yes, we're all going to die. You don't want to die an eternal death. Okay? Jesus is saying, cut it out. Cut it out. Repent. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Turn, turn. Uh, understand that this is sin. You got to first get there first. First get there first. That's the first thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not funny, but that, um, I don't know what's wrong with me. Anyways, let's get back to this. Colossians 3, 5. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication. Hey, fornicators, I was one. Can you just admit it and just repent? Or are you going to defend yourself? Oh, we love each other. Okay. You love each other. We, sex is, I got to have sex. I got to, okay. Well, if you're a Christian today and you're fornicating, you need to do something about that. How about covetousness? How about uncleanliness? Passions? Evil desires. Now, covetousness, I find interesting because covetousness is a sin <clears throat> that leads to idolatry. According to the scripture, I'm just going by scripture. This is not Randy's opinion. I'll let you know if it's my opinion, but this is what I'm reading. And if I'm not taking, if we're not taking this literally, I don't know how else to take it. You're welcome to comment. If you want to respectfully, this is so serious though. And you can tell the seriousness of this because you can see the picture of my face and you can hear it in my voice. Usually I'm pretty jokey, jokey. And I, and I have a good sense of humor. I think I do anyways. I think I do. <laughs> you might not. <clears throat> but this is really serious. It's really serious to know that, you know, to learn, to learn this. So when I'm, I got to get something to drink. One minute, please. Uno momento for you in Spanish. Of course, I'm not doing this in Spanish. So covetousness, I think, is interesting because it leads to another sin. And covetousness, really, uh, as I, and I'll give you some of the definitions that I found online. You can look them up. Maybe give me a better uh, t a taste of this. But really, it starts in the mind. It's really a sin of the mind. It's something that you want. It, it leads us to prioritize stuff or people or things above God is a strong desire after possessions or worldly things and and not just possessions not just you know uh, <clears throat> sometimes it's material uh, uh, and then it could be wanting somebody else's stuff things or people in their lives um, the sin is an ungodly desire for something that belongs or someone that belongs to another 
<clears throat> adultery is a good example of covetousness. It starts, it starts with covetousness. You see, and that leads to idolatry. Uh, an affair, having adulterous, you're, you're, you're already in idolatry. You've put that person before. That'll never work out. If it does, maybe there's been a few that have worked out. You know, there's been a few uh, relationships, I'm sure, that have uh, somehow God has graced. And, and, you know, I'm not going to say everyone, but uh, those things don't usually work out in the end uh, because they're not right. They're not righteous. Um, so do self-denial, put to death. You know, we talk about mortifying the flesh, but um, just to get back to covetousness, sorry, I went ahead of myself, got ahead of myself. I want to give an example. I came up with David with Bathsheba. He coveted her in his mind, and you see how this went to idolatry and actually went to other sins like murder, right? <laughs> and then, uh, there's all kinds of things that happen in, in his life, and, uh, and David's life is laid out. Good thing my life's not in the Bible. Praise the Lord, there's not anything about me in the Bible. But David's life is there. If you want to learn about covetousness, learn about that, David Bathsheba. He killed her husband. He, no, Bathsheba doesn't belong to him. If you're having an affair, that person doesn't belong to you. He's not He or she's not yours. Ahaz in the vineyard was another uh, covetous uh, covetousness uh, type of thing. Ahaz wanted the vineyard. The guy wouldn't sell it to him. And then Jezebel took care of that and killed the man. I mean, it's just, it turns to idolatry. So I thought it was interesting to get in that. So, you know, therefore put to death your members. Put to death. Cut it out. <laughs> cut it out. Spiritual surgery. You need to, this is how serious it is. This, the sin in your life. This is it. You're looking at it pictorially. We need to mortify the flesh. And to mortify is to subdue, is to put to death. Again, take away abstinence of. To, in the Greek, it really means to put an end to the life of something. And that really is a picture of repentance. Your life was here. This is your life here. As the old, You're, you're just living in this flesh, doing what the flesh desires. Flesh, flesh, flesh. It, it's time to end that now. Especially if you're a Christian. That is your life. You are mortify the flesh. Seems like a lot, doesn't it? It really does. Most a lot of people will walk away. Most people, in fact, will walk away. Jesus, uh, when he fed the five thousand, it was like too much. A lot of people that were walking after Jesus, they walked away. And Jesus turned to his twelve disciples and said, "Do you guys want to go too? Because I'm going this way. Are you following me? You know who are you following? <laughs> we follow people on Facebook all the time." Who are you following? Who who are you following? Are you following Christ? If you're following Christ, then you must, you must, you must mortify the flesh. You must kill the flesh. This is a this is a must. This is a this is a, this might seem like Bible basics. In fact, this is like discipleship 101. You know, uh, besides you know getting the getting into understanding all this stuff, this is maybe not 101. This might be the second chapter in, in discipleship program. But this is it. This is the this is the life of a Christian. So you might want to bail out if you don't think this this is it. There's no there's no other way to live. In fact, you know I put down how can we? We we do it by walking in the Spirit. Well, I don't understand that. Jesus said you, you the true worshiper will worship in spirit and in truth. If we walk in the Spirit, we won't gratify the lusts of the flesh. What are you saying, Randy? We're going to have the flesh with us as long as we're on planet Earth. You're carrying around the flesh. It's there. It's, it's not going to change until we have our new bodies, our glorified bodies, and we're in heaven. This problem is going to be with you. It's kind of a bummer. When I, when I got saved, as many people did, but I really thought, I was. that's it. My problem, my inner problems are gone. My sin problems are gone. I... I, I, it's it. I've solved. I've solved it. No, you haven't. I didn't. Didn't go away. I have to do something here, uh, and I need the help of the Holy Spirit. It ain't happening without the Paraclete. I beg you. I beg you. First Peter, uh, two eleven. I beg you to abstain from fleshly 
lusts which war against the soul. Randy is begging you. I'm begging you. And that's strong language, don't you think? All right. Spiritual surgery, fleshly lust. A lust, lust is a person's own, uh, it, fleshly lust, a fleshly lust is a lust of a person's own unredeemed nature. Well, that's, a, that's the unsaved. That's you out there that's not saved. You have this nature. We have this nature too. But now we're able to combat it with the Holy Spirit. I'll explain. This unredeemed nature draws him or her into error. What's the error? To gratify our body's desire at the cost. At the cost of morality and what is good for our own souls. For what shall a man profit? If he loses, if he gains the world, but loses his only soul. Jesus said that. What shall a man profit? What are you profiting? The world and your flesh. But you're losing your soul. You will lose your soul. To, to a, a place called the lake of fire. It, it, that, that This is what the Bible. I totally believe now. I totally believe the Bible. And that's what's going to happen. And that's why I'm here talking to you today. I beg you to abstain from fleshly lust. Uh, it's a very sombering message, but <laughs> fleshly desire is pleasure-seeking behavior. In the last days, Second Timothy, uh, the Bible says that there will be lovers of self, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. This is what draws us away from God's presence. I mean, the flesh, if we were to talk about the flesh, there, there are really two meanings here. We have the flesh of living beings, you know, birds. There's the flesh, you know. We have our flesh. And then we have our sinful nature, which is our flesh. Dominated. It is dominated by sin and rebellion. What do you mean rebellion? You're, you're rebelling against, you're a rebel. You're a rebel, rebel, rebel against the king of the universe, against the creator of all things, against the rightful king, Jesus Christ. You're rebelling against God. You can't. It doesn't work this way. It wasn't meant to. Jesus is loving. No, I'm going to tell you, he loves us so much that he died for you and me. He died for rebels like me, and I was a rebel, Uh you know, desires that, that arise from our earthly nature are not just sins in themselves. We have desires. We have natural desires like food. <laughs> we get hungry. Water, uh, comfort, shelter, sex. Those are all natural desires. God-given. So don't, 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 don't misunderstand that those desires in and of themselves are sin. That's not what I'm saying. God created these uh, but desiring to please ourselves, regardless of God's moral law, with our fleshly desires, uh, rule over, taking prior, priority over God's will. First John, if you want to look up First John 2.17. If we follow the after the flesh, if we follow after the flesh, if we follow after the lust, if we follow after the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, we cannot do the will of God, and therefore... Therefore, will not inherit the kingdom of God or have eternal life. It's that simple, but it's that serious. If we don't, we don't do, we don't cut the sin out of our lives. If we don't mortify the flesh, if we don't live and walk after the Spirit of God, we will not inherit eternal life. How can I say that? Well, Matthew seven twenty one says, "Lord, Lord, many are calling him Lord, Lord." He says, depart from me, you who practice iniquity. You who keep practicing sin. But all people sin. Christians sin. Christians sin, but repent and have a lifestyle of repentance. Un people that are not saved and don't have the Holy Spirit, they just continue to sin. They might recognize God. They might intellectualize God. They might say, they might say, I know Jesus Christ. I've given, I was baptized. They might say that they do nice things. They, they do the work of God. They're a good person. They might 
believe all those things, but you're being self-deceived because narrow is the way the Bible says. Narrow is the way and few that find it. Why are few finding it? And why is it wide and many are going to heaven? Most people are going to hell. Why is that? Why is that? That doesn't sound right. Why is that? Because they're not, they don't take this message seriously and they don't mortify the flesh. I know I didn't. I wasn't cutting it out. This is this is like cut. I got cancer on my face. It's time to cut it out. That's just all there is to it. I, I'm sinning. I need to cut this out of my life. I need to repent. Um, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 uh, through 10, we have a pastor who's a notable pastor, young pastor out there who's a son of a very, uh, I won't give the name, but he's a son of the uh, of a great pastor who once was a uh, uh, he, he recently died. But he blew right over 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10 because he's talking about homosexuality. And uh, But, you know, this says, in that scripture, it says, and don't you know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? I mean, it's as plain as the big nose on my face, as this big bandage is. Don't you know that the unrighteous, who who is this? Who are these people that won't enter the kingdom of heaven? Well, they are the sexually immoral. We use this verse for homosexuality, but hey, uh, are you fornicating? Are you living outside of God's? I don't care what you say, what kind of justification you make or I make. It says, neither the sexually immoral. Are you involved with porn? Cut it out of your life. Get it out of your life. Are you living with somebody? Are you fornicating? Are you having sex outside of marriage? Stop. Repent. This is the message. Cut it out of your life. Are, no, are, no uh, neither the sexually moral. The idolaters, the adulterers. Are you having an affair? Are you having one in your mind? Are you, are you having an affair? Are you sleeping with somebody else's husband or wife? It should, you should. I hope you feel bad about it because that godly sorrow leads to repentance. Uh, not just guilty, but I mean, I, I need to, to, you need to repent. God will forgive you. Now, I don't want to just drop it off there. Adulterers, no men who practice homosexuality. I mean, it's in black and white. Actually, it's blue pen today. Thieves, greedy, drunkards said nothing about alcoholics. I'm an alcoholic for the rest of my life. That actually, I don't see that in the Bible. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah, work the steps. Do your thing. Go to AA. Whatever you got to do. Celebrate recovery. Go go get some help for your addiction. Go get some help if you got addiction. Find out what the bottom line is. Usually it's uh, it's medicating some other sin. It's usually somewhere down the road. Medicating some pain in your life. Are you you're dealing with addiction, depression, codependency? Codependency is, let me tell you right now, stop. I'm going to leave my email. Maybe I can help you. At least you can write me. If you're dealing with those things and you need some help in those areas, write me. You need some prayer. God can heal you. You can you can get out of uh, addiction. Revelers, swindlers, they will not this is they will not enter the kingdom of God. Uh, look, the conclusion are those who are born again, and there aren't two different kind of Christians. There are born-again Christians. <laughs> That's what you are. Those who are born again by faith in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ will continually put to death the deeds of the flesh. It's a continual process. It's a continual daily walk after God. But we will not allow our lust of our flesh to control our lives and control us. We will choose to consider ourselves crucified with Christ. It seems overwhelming. And to some of you, you will walk away from this message. But with the health of the power of the Holy Spirit indwelling us, we can overcome. You can overcome. Friend, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will not enter the kingdom of God. If you do not live after Christ, if you do not put to death, cut this out of your life, you will not enter the kingdom of God. That's, that's I can't see any other. I'm, I'm looking for a loophole. Eight one. I looked for loopholes for years. It, it doesn't exist. Jesus Christ loves you, died for you, paid the penalty though. It's all been paid for. You must, you must repent or you will perish. And you must come to him humbly and ask him for forgiveness. He will forgive you and he's paid the price. There's the love message behind it. And he's paid the price. And you will enter the kingdom of God if you do those things. 
and you ask him to come in your life, indwell in you, become part of you, and he will help you in this journey. God bless you. I love you. And Jesus Christ loves you to death.